it's true that patients do have to wait occasionally, um, and we're really, really sorry about that. It's how theatres run, and so if you are unlucky not to be the first patient on the list, what we really recommend is that you bring something to do while you wait, a book to read, maybe music to listen to, or some other activity, because you will have a wait. When we first come and see you, there's a published list, and from that we can get some idea of where you might be and how long things might take. But that isn't finalised till we then go back into theatre and arrange the list properly. So yes, you can ask and you might get a rough idea, but that might need to be updated later on. It's the first thing in the morning, the surgeon, the surgical team, the anaesthetic team will go and meet patients and uh, obviously go through them, uh, through the um, notes and find out if there are any concerns from the patient themselves or from within the notes. We then will all meet together in theatre and we do what's called the WHO meeting, the World Health Organization safety check meeting and that is where we introduce ourselves to each other, make sure everyone in theatre knows who they are and the role they'll be playing that day. And then we'll go through each patient in turn and we'll be highlighting if there are any particular anaesthetic issues, any surgical issues, what equipment might be needed, drug allergies and so on. And, for, and at the end of that we may have to rearrange the order of the list from the originally published list and it's only after that we'll get some idea of the sort of timing of how the list will run. On the ward, um, nurses are very busy, so if, uh, providing they're not um, doing it frequently, they can towards the sort of timing, if they've been given a rough time for example and they feel they've overrun that time, then they can check with ward staff. Um, especially if that timely phone call hasn't come from the theatre, then that's something that can be done. Um, but the reassurance is that they won't be missed off the list. So yes, they might be waiting, but they won't be missed off the list. There are several opportunities for a patient to discuss any concerns they might have about their other medical conditions with the healthcare professionals. The first opportunity is at preoperative assessment when the patient meets the nurse. Some patients will then go on to see the anaesthetist in preoperative assessment who will then go into detail about a patient's other medical conditions and discuss them as well. Finally, on the day of surgery, both the anaesthetist and the surgeon will come to meet the patient and that's an excellent opportunity for the patient to raise any additional concerns they might have about their medical conditions. It's important to communicate with the rest of the theatre team with regard to any medical conditions the patient might have and this is done at the beginning of the theatre list uh, with a group of all the healthcare professionals involved in the patient's care. Um, at this point, uh, any concerning medical conditions will be raised and discussed. Many patients have the concern that they might be awake during their operation but unable to move and tell somebody that they are awake. This is a very understandable concern but it does not happen very often. About one in a thousand people will experience some kind of dreaming experience associated with their anaesthetic but this is very rarely associated with any pain and not felt to be unpleasant. Much less frequently, about 1 in 50,000 times, a patient might actually experience some episode of being awake during their operation. During your anaesthetic, your anaesthetist will remain with you all the time. You're monitored very carefully to make sure that you are both fast asleep and comfortable. We watch your heart rate and your blood pressure and other signs to try and ensure that this risk of awareness is kept to an absolute minimum. It happens most commonly in emergency operations when the patient is rushed to theatre for surgery, which means that a planned operation makes the risk of awareness even less likely. Not waking up at the end of your anaesthetic and operation is a very, very rare event indeed. It happens about one to eight times in 100,000 operations. At this particular hospital, we do 25,000 operations a year, so that you, you can see that it's not a common event. 
If it is felt that due to the nature of your operation or your medical conditions that you might not wake up, then you will have a long chat with your anaesthetist before the operation about this. After your operation, your anaesthetist and surgeon will arrange for you to go to the intensive care unit. This is a dedicated specialised unit where you receive one-to-one -one nursing, where you are monitored at the highest level to ensure that we keep you as safe and as well as possible. Each patient will have a recovery nurse will sort of repeatedly ask, are you, are you comfortable, do you feel sick at all? And that will be the first person to report your pain to and they'll be at your bedside so they'll be very close should you want to get their attention. Um, they'll also have things written up that they can give you um, and if they feel that they're not able to get it under control or the pain is more than we expect, they'd also ask the anaesthetist to come and look at you. But obviously our main concern is that we get you as comfortable as quick as possible. Pain is one of the things that a lot of people seem to worry about after operations. It's something that we do take very seriously. There's a number of op options that we can offer patients. We can either put a single injection into the back or around the nerves, put some local anaesthetic as a one-off injection that will make the area around uh, where we're operating numb and a little bit more comfortable afterwards. One of the other options is that we leave a, um, a little tube in your back or around the nerves so that we can run the local anaesthetic for it to last a little bit longer. If the surgery isn't suitable for that we, and we need something a little bit stronger, we may give you some morphine that we can give you in a pump and you can press a button to control it. But we'd obviously go through with the patient how to use this in recovery. Sometimes we can control your pain with um, simple oral painkillers and often you'll have regular painkillers and also the patient will have more that they can ask for. So the patient obviously shouldn't ever be in pain, there's always more there. And we encourage patients to report any pain so that we can manage the pain a little bit better. Being sick after surgery is a major concern for patients and um, evidence is that about a, a quarter of patients might feel nauseated or vomit after surgery. The risk is increased if there are certain things that are um, in the patient's history, so being travel sick, a previous history of nausea or vomiting after an anaesthetic, below the age of 16, being female, and then particular types of surgery, so gynaecological surgery, eye surgery, ear, nose and throat surgery, those are associated with a higher risk of nausea and vomiting. However, modern anaesthetics almost always incorporate some anti-sickness medicine and um, we use that almost, I say, almost routinely and over time there has been a reduction in the incidence of nausea and vomiting. And I think a further thing to say is that if in the post-operative period in the recovery ward and then further on to the discharge ward, if patients are feeling sick or have vomited, there is further anti-nausea medicine available. So that's something that I know is a major worry, but it is something that we are actively involved in trying to reduce. If patients um, exhibit one or more of the risk factors for an increased incidence of nausea and vomiting, then it's something that we'll hopefully will elicit or get out of the pre-anesthetic meeting. If that hasn't been raised, then absolutely we want the patients to raise it themselves. So if they've had an anaesthetic previously where they've been very sick, that's something they should bring to the attention of the anaesthetist, because then the anaesthetist might give a combination of more than one anti-sickness or anti-emetic medication. And then also in the post-operative period there'll be a special note made so that the recovery nurses and the ward nurses be aware of that. And things that we can do then are a further dose of an anti-sickness medication, maybe give them some intravenous fluids, um, change positioning sometimes, or other things that might be provoking nausea and vomiting, for example, extra pain medication and so on. So there are things that we'll be actively looking for and trying to help the patients with. At this particular hospital, uh, patient care and safety is one of our highest priorities. It is very understandable that when patients come into hospital for an operation that they might feel vulnerable and anxious that they won't be cared for properly. But this is something that we take very seriously. We have a team of dedicated professionals who will put your comfort and your care as a highest priority.
patients sometimes worry about whether they can deteriorate and the purpose of us being there is to to observe them and monitor them and therefore at the first sign of any change we would then stop them from deteriorating so there's no possibility of a deterioration taking place without us noticing and acting upon it. Most patients will come to pre-op clinic and be seen and given advice on their pre-op medication. The majority of medication will tell patients to continue. There are, however, certain medications that we'll want to stop, and these are usually the blood thinning drugs like warfarin or clopidogrel, um, and we'll give you very specific advice on whether to stop those and also when to restart them. If a patient comes away from pre-op assessment um, and they aren't clear or have any worries about medication, we advise them to ring pre-op assessment before the day of surgery just to reconfirm what they should and shouldn't take. The decision about what type of anaesthetic to give the patient for an operation depends both on the operation and the patient themselves. It may be that for a fairly minor procedure um, that a local anaesthetic is more suitable because that enables you to get back to sort of normal life and get up and around um, a little bit quicker afterwards. Um, there may be also medical reasons why we opt for one anaesthetic over another and you will be able to talk to, this, to the, both the anaesthetist and the surgeon about that. Obviously we want to involve you in the decision and it's important that you don't feel anxious about your up and coming surgery. Um, so we'll be able to sort of sit down and talk you through the advantages and disadvantages of sort of either one and come to a decision together. So this is um, a safety mechanism. We have a checklist and the really, really important things that we really want to be sure that we don't miss. And those questions will be asked by different series of people as patients progress through um, the hospital. And that's to make sure that things don't get missed. So for example, the correct side of operation, um, a life-threatening allergy, for example, whether they have um, loose teeth or crowns or caps. So there's a list of things that we check. And we, the idea is that if one person has, for some reason, not picked that up, that by the time they come through into theatre, we've had all of those things checked. So after um, an anaesthetic and uh, surgical operation, um, it may be that the patient feels a little bit tired or under the weather for that day, or it may take you a couple of days to feel back to normal, and that's, norm that's normal. The important thing is that you give yourself a chance to sort of recover. In the case of major surgery, it may take a period of sort of weeks and months for the patients to feel back to their normal self. Certainly, um, the patient won't go home until we feel you're able to cope with sort of daily activities, but it's important to give yourself a chance um, to recover and rest after an operation before you try and get back to your normal activities. So the first few days at home, we would advise you to take things fairly easy. Um, we'll certainly we'll give you written advice to go home with, and we would say certainly don't drive or sign in any important documents for 24 hours after a general anaesthetic. But every patient's different, and I would take it at your own pace. Um, but certainly we will advise you about things like heavy lifting, um, work, and other activities about when you should expect to get back to normal. So the patient goes home from hospital usually with information um, on sort of post-op expectation and when to get back to normal activities, there'll also be contact details on that. So if, they're, if you, the patient is unsure about anything, feels their recovery isn't as normal or um, has any queries, then they can ring up and we'll, obviously if we have any concerns, we'll see them back. We recently conducted a survey of patients um, and the anxieties they might have before they come into hospital for an anaesthetic and an operation. We found that patients who'd already had an operation felt a little less concerned and so we thought we'd make a DVD to create a kind of virtual tour for patients so that they might understand better the process that they're about to go through and this might lessen some of their concerns.
we have included the main aspects of your preoperative assessment process, so your trip to the preoperative assessment clinic, um, who you might see there and why you'll see them, through to what will actually happen to you on the day. Once it's been decided that a patient requires an operation, they then need to be seen in the pre-assessment clinic. They will see a couple of nurses, one who will do things like height and weight and measure blood pressure, and another nurse who will go through a healthcare questionnaire with the patient in order to find out a little bit about any medical conditions that the patient might have. There are um, some patients who, having seen the preoperative assessment nurse in clinic, will need to then go on and see a doctor who's an anaesthetist in clinic as well. These patients will either be having certain types of operation or they will have certain medical conditions which may need a little bit more thought before their anaesthetic in order to ensure that the anaesthetic is as safe as possible. Um, so the anaesthetist will then talk to the patient about their condition. Um, they will describe the kind of anaesthetic they might have for their operation. Um, and they will arrange any further tests or investigations that the patient might need before they go on to have their operation. When a patient receives an appointment for the pre-assessment clinic, they should bring with them uh, any medication that they're taking or a list of the medication or both, that would be absolutely fine, um, plus any details that they might have of medical conditions that they are being treated for. If a patient has any concerns after they've been to pre-assessment clinic, then they are always welcome to call and get any further advice that they need about medications they might be taking or questions they might have about their anaesthetic and operation. On the day of surgery, patients who are having day surgery, so will be going home the same day, will go to the day surgery unit or ward. Patients who are expecting to stay in the hospital for one or more nights will go to one of a couple of different areas. They might go straight to the ward where they're expecting to stay, or they might go to a day waiting area where they'll be checked in and got ready for their operation, and then after their operation, they'll return to a different ward bed. It is particularly important to remember to bring your medications and a list of your medications, um, plus something to read or something to do while you wait for your operation to happen. When a patient arrives in the ward and is checked in, there are certain routine things that the nurse will check and go through with the patient. Uh, the blood pressure, your pulse and the um, oxygen levels will be rechecked by the nurse. Um, they will place a name band on every patient and they will also recheck the patient's medications and whether they have any allergies. They'll then ask a list of routine questions uh, which are repeated throughout the day and including when the patient last ate and drank. After the patient's been checked in by the nurse, the patient will always meet their anaesthetist who's going to be with them throughout the operation and the surgeon who's going to do the operation. The surgeon will have a final chat about the operation and ask the patient to sign a consent form and the anaesthetist will have a chat with the patient about what kind of anaesthetic they'd like to do and what kind of pain relief options will be um, available after the operation. The pain relief options obviously depend on how big or small the operation is and what kind of pain would be anticipated. The most basic pain relief anyone will be offered is some simple tablets such as paracetamol or neurofen, which if taken regularly can be very effective. But if we feel that patients need some stronger pain relief than that, then we increase the strength of the tablets that we're offering. So a patient might then be offered tablets such as codeine or cocodamol to stronger painkillers such as morphine. There are other painkiller options available as well. Um, sometimes local anaesthetic is injected to numb an arm or a leg, and sometimes local anaesthetic is injected around the back area to numb the lower half of the body. This is called an epidural or a spinal. When a patient's called on the day of surgery, if they're able to, then they'll walk down to theatre accompanied by one of the ward nurses, or occasionally one of the theatre staff will come and get them. If a patient finds it difficult to walk or uncomfortable, then they'll be offered the option of either travelling to theatre on a chair or on a trolley, whichever the patient prefers. When a patient arrives into the anaesthetic room, it can feel a little daunting because there will be a number of people there, all wearing blue or green scrubs. The patient will be asked to climb onto a trolley and they'll be made comfortable with a pillow and a blanket. And then monitoring will be attached, which will include a blood pressure cuff, an ECG on the chest and a little peg on the finger, which measures oxygen levels. The anaesthetic nurse will then check in the patient, asking a lot of the same questions again and making sure that we've got the right patient for the right operation on the right day. The patient will then have a small cannula or drip placed into the back of their hand, which will allow us to give them the anaesthetic medication that they need to go off to sleep. Before any drugs have been given, 
they are fully awake. So they will remember clearly all that part of the procedure. As soon as one or two anaesthetic medications have been given, it's likely that the patient will start to feel a little drowsy and may well be forgetful of anything that happens afterwards. But some patients remember clearly the moment of going to sleep. For the patients that it's been decided it would be helpful to have some kind of local anaesthetic block, either in an arm or in their back, this will be done before the patient goes off to sleep. If this is an injection in the back, the patient will normally sit up on the trolley. If it's an injection in, for example, your neck or shoulder, then the patient will be lying on the trolley with their arm out. After the block has been given and the anaesthetist is happy that the patient is comfortable, the general anaesthetic will be given and the patient will drift off to sleep. While the patient's having their surgery, the anaesthetist is with them all the time, keeping an eye on them and making sure that they're safe. They'll have been given painkillers and anti-sickness drugs as needed during the operation. The first thing that patients normally remember is waking up in recovery with the recovery nurse looking after them. We try and prevent sickness in all patients, but it's possible there might be a little bit of sickness, and if this is the case, then the patient should let the recovery nurse know straight away so that they can treat it with a medicine. The vast majority of patients only stay for 20 to 30 minutes, and then when they're comfortable and awake, then they will be taken back to the ward. A few patients are kept in recovery for longer. These tend to be patients who were less well or who have had a more major operation, and so they're kept in recovery for a period of several hours to make sure that they're stable, that they're well, that their pain is well controlled. When a patient's transferred back to the ward, if they're a day surgery patient, they can be, expect to be going home within a couple of hours. Most patients will be offered something to eat and something to drink, and when they've had that and they feel well enough to walk around, then they can get themselves dressed, and as soon as they're comfortable and the nurse is happy, then they'll be discharged. One allocated person is very welcome to call the ward and check on the patient's progress. Um, when a patient is ready to go home, then the nursing staff will always contact the designated person to let them know that the patient is ready for collection. As a trust, one of our priorities is to ensure that patients feel informed and reassured before any visit to the hospital. We hope that you found this virtual tour as informative and reassuring as possible. If you do have any further questions, please ask any member of staff. I think my concern started when I obviously understood I was going to have an operation um, and you have time to digest that and then you sort of move on to the next thing and it's like right I'm going to hospital I'm going to have an operation and you start thinking through what that means um, so the anxiety in terms of the operation and the anaesthetic for me um, started to build a few days before the operation itself on the day surgery ward I was on um, you hear the conversations of other people who are in for surgery, which sometimes can add to your level of anxiety or ease it. But the best thing for me was just to put myself in my own zone, um, take a deep breath, knew I was in the right place. And what really helped that was putting in a set of headphones, having some really good music, um, just to take me somewhere else for for five minutes if I needed it, for an hour if I needed it. Um, sometimes a book doesn't always do that because you've still got your ears. So music really helped me. On the day of the surgery, it was really reassuring to meet um, first the surgeon and then the anaesthetist. Um, main reason is you just, you see a face and, and they're there for you and you, they are your surgeon and your anaesthetist for, for your operation. Um, and they're really reassuring, you know, they're real people, they smile, they ask if you've got any questions, any concerns, and you really feel you've got their attention and their time for as long as you need it, 
and it really, really helps. If you see an anaesthetist, they're sat right at the head of the person who's having an operation and almost appear to be a real comfort for that person because they are there solely for them. And yeah, if you take some time to think about that before your operation, it is, um, it's a real comfort. It's like your little guardian angel for however long you're in surgery. They're absolutely there for you. When I met my anaesthetist before the surgery, um, she actually made me laugh um, because my folder was really thin. So she, she said, I must be really fit and healthy. And it was just nice just to break, break that tension. Um, I didn't have any significant questions for her. It really was just reassuring to meet her and see that she was real and she was lovely and that everything was going to be okay. It was overall a very reassuring five, ten minutes. The, the day ward that I experienced, the staff were really professional, uh, very efficient. Um, everyone explained to you what was going to happen and everyone gave you an opportunity to ask any questions if you had any. Um, and no problem was too small. You know, if you ha suddenly had a concern and it seemed really daft, you, you didn't feel uncomfortable asking it at all. They were, the staff on the ward were, were fantastic and felt very well looked after. I actually came out of my anaesthetic and the operation feeling fantastic. I felt, I think I was actually smiling, um, felt fine. And the next 24, 48 hours, I, I really just felt normal. I looked after myself and, you know, I didn't do anything crazy, but no, I felt really well. Uh, I think that the best advice I could give is you're going for an operation, which is a good thing because you're getting something fixed. Um, and it's not to resist it. It's to take a deep breath and go with the flow. The people that are there to look after you um, are trained. You need to trust them. You need to let them do their job. Um, and there's no harm in smiling, you know, it's, everyone's there to look after you, take a deep breath and, um, and just trust the people there that they will take care of you and look after you. At this particular hospital, uh, patient care and safety is one of our highest priorities. It is very understandable that when patients come into hospital for an operation that they might feel vulnerable and anxious that they won't be cared for properly. But this is something that we take very seriously. We have a team of dedicated professionals who will put your comfort and your care as a highest priority.